Hey guys, welcome to the show. Uh, does it feel like a Friday to you? I don't know. I woke up this morning. I'm like, it feels like a Friday. So anyway, I'm glad you guys could make it to the channel. Today's show, we have to be extremely careful how we cover this information. So I need to disclose right up front to YouTube reviewers, whoever whoever's stalking this channel, that um, the AP claims in this article here, Actually, this is the article. Where'd that AP article go? Uh, but uh, but uh, oh, here it is. We've got a lot to cover today, you guys. So this is the AP article. Okay. They're, they're calling it a sticker desert. And some countries have no stickers at all. There are 19. This was dated May 9th, 2021. That has now narrowed down to about four or five countries in Africa that do not have the stickers at all. But this article uh, makes a quote, and I need to disclose that up front, that they are saying that the numbers that we're going to be reporting on today are vastly underreported. Now, I'm going to read directly from this article. It says, while the total number, and it, it says this in the article, I'm not going to pull it up here, but this is what it says in here. It says, while the total of confirmed CV-19 cases um among them is relatively low compared with the world. Um, hotspots, health officials say that figure is likely a vast undercount. Countries in Africa are still waiting for VCs, are among those least equipped to track infections because of their fragile healthcare systems. Unquote. So this is what they say. Now, having said that, we are going to look at those numbers. And so my question is, why report numbers that you know are wrong or suspect are wrong? Isn't that right against it directly against what science says, what they tell us about numbers and and, and I can't say the word D-A-T-A. -A. That's the word that apparently gets the algorithms on your back in YouTube world. They don't like people talking about that. But if you think about it, they've built their entire policies off of these numbers. And any scientist will tell you that you can't use wrong numbers. What was it they always told us in science? Garbage in, garbage out, right? So you've got to start with good numbers to get the results you're looking for. So despite AP telling us that their numbers are wrong, Today, we're going to look at the numbers of five African countries that to date have not received a single dose of the sticker. And we're going to look at how those countries are faring in terms of CV-19. We're just going to be asking questions. We're not making any statements or assumptions. We're simply going to be looking at the numbers and asking questions. Now, what science says is that some of these countries who don't have any stickers should have some of the highest cases per capita since there was nothing stopping CV-19 from running rampant. Right? That's what science tells us. This is what this is why they've been pushing the stickers so, so much because they're like, hey, there's no such thing as natural IMO in the city. And it's never going to be enough to beat CV-19. We have to have stickers. Remember? And based on this policy, America is on the verge of sticker passports, mandatory employer stickers, intense pressure for every man, woman, and child to get stickered. And it's basically created a subclass of people in America that are being discriminated against, shamed, and basically treated as second-class citizens simply for deciding they don't want to be involved in this. So let's take a look at Africa. Now, according to BBC News, this is as of June 3rd. Let's take a look here. Go back up to the top of this article. CV-19, Africa, what is happening with the stickers? BBC News. And they're saying that there's this COVAX program and they are saying that it has not reached these five countries yet. Let's take a look. Where are they? And the COVAX program is, is 
a program in which they are saying they're going to provide fair medical treatment to the countries of Africa by spreading the VC, the, the sticker, to as many of the countries as they can. But it says here, as of June 3rd, only Tanzania, Burundi, Chad, and Eritrea are yet to receive the stickers, right? So, COVAX, we've all heard that name before. This was in Utopia, the name of the company who made a VC, a sticker, in that series that came out way back in 2013 and they've chosen almost the same name to name this scheme they call it to get all of africa to get the sticker so tanzania burundi chad and eritrea those are the four countries we're going to look at today and you would think that with the kind of some sub substandard medical care in these countries that they, that they would be a mess when it comes to cv19 right it should be devolving into chaos at this point now what bothers me about these articles we're going to look at the numbers in a second but i'm setting this up for you guys what bothers me about these articles here is that they frame the lack of stickers in these african na and nations as some kind of atrocity that these people were neglected and ignored and these should have these stickers should have been sent out sooner. This is the, they are they get these articles are guilt tripping articles. But the question is, how did these countries fare? Now again, fair balance. They are saying that these are massively underreported, but they're published numbers, so we're going to look at them. Now, I found this map. This is Reuters. YouTube and this shows this this map shows is it begins to paint the picture of what percentage of the peak amount of cases right that each African country is at the peak I'm gonna make sure you guys are with me and we'll get into these numbers stickered versus unstickered all right how's the sound everything's good all right looks like you guys are good Let's keep going with this. So again, these uh, these spamdemics, they reach peaks and then they start to decline, right? This was the whole thing about flattening the curve. This was all about getting the CV-19 into a decline. So this chart measures what percentage of the peak in the particular country. Now... This is a little bit deceiving because peak of what is the question, right? It, okay, so the peak of nothing is nothing, right? Or the peak of very little is very little. So let's take a look at this. Are the cases on the upswing or the downswing? Now, even here, every country that has yet to receive the stickers pretty much are on the downswing of their peaks. The four countries that we're going to look at. Tanzania. Where'd it go? Here it is. Less than 1% of their peak have not received a single sticker. Burundi. Here's Burundi here. Their 24% of their peak have not received a single sticker. Now, the two, the two countries that have are at a partial are at a larger percentage of their peak but still not at their peak is Eritrea 67% of their peak and i think the other one is Burundi did we look at Chad already here's Chad less than 1% so we got Chad and Tanzania countries that have not received their sticker but basically it's gone Less than 1% of the peak. How can this be, right? Burundi and Eritrea. 67% for Eritrea and Burundi 24%. So, again, if these are underreported numbers, why are they published? But we need to get a more accurate picture, right? 
because we're not seeing the number of cases here. So I came over to this CNN tracker again, one of their official fact or cact feckers sites, right? This is supposed to be the bread and butter, the gold standard of information. So this is what we're going to look at these underreported numbers. And we're going to look at these countries that have not received a single sticker. We're going to look at the numbers that are reported for, we're going to look at the death numbers. Okay. Now I've sorted these from most deaths, which amazingly the U S has the most, of course, we're getting roasted saying, Oh, it's because you guys have freedom and you could have, you should have locked this down more, took more jobs away, forced more people to get the sticker. And then it wouldn't be this high. This is the narrative that they're spinning right now. As they roast America that maybe freedom isn't so great because look at all these people that, that died, right? But here we have, we're sorting these by deaths, okay? So most deaths, and it's got every single country in the world listed here. Reported cases and deaths. So let's look at the countries, the four countries in Africa that have not received a single sticker. Let's start with Tanzania. 21 people. Now, despite the number of cases being underreported, it's really hard to underreport a death, is it not? So this is probably a better indicator as to what's going on. 21 people in the entire country of Tanzania, they're reporting, died from CV-19. Let's look at Chad. And there's Chad with 174 deaths in the entire country. You guys, these are very low numbers. Again, we're looking at deaths, not underreported cases. So, why do they need stickers? More people die in these countries of wild animal encounters, snakes, uh, you know, car accidents, and trampled by a I don't know, an elephant, than there are in these cases of death. Now, let's look at Eritrea and Burundi, the last two countries. Again, 17 deaths in Eritrea, not a single sticker. And Burundi, at eight deaths. So, between the four countries that have not received a single sticker, there are less than 200 total deaths from CV-19 that were reported. Unbelievable. So now you can look back at this chart and you can see how this almost seems intentionally obscure, showing percentage of the peak. This doesn't give us enough information. You have to look across several channels of information to get the truth. But if you were to see this, you would say, oh, look at these. Look at this. Uganda is at its peak. The Congo is at its peak. Now, I looked these up on CNN's map, these ones that are at their peak of, of cases and death. And lo and behold, let's look up Uganda. None of these exceed a thousand deaths. So yeah, they're at the peak, but the only still less than a thousand people have died. Uh, let's look at that was you that was Uganda. Let's look up Congo. How many people died there? They're at their peak. Again, 160 deaths. What's the other one here? I'm trying to get you to understand what's going on here. Something is not right. Zambia. Let's try Zambia. Zambia is at, oh, they're at 1,400 deaths. So for anyone that knows, um, you know, African history and African uh, culture and all that, you'll understand that there are millions and millions of people in these countries, millions in each of these countries. 
But here it is, the numbers hiding in plain sight. But it's weird because the media paints this picture as if these countries are all suffering because they don't have access to stickers. Now, even if these case counts were undercounted, it's the number of deaths that tells the story. Those pretty much always get counted because there's a death certificate filled out and there's a test performed, right? See if that person had CV-19. Now, I don't know what the testing is like over there. You know, but we're talking about stickers. We're not talking about tests right now. So in terms of a, the fraction of the population, let's look at exactly what is going on with this. Because this will give us even a better picture. 58 million people live in Tanzania. That's one fifth of the U.S. population. One fifth of the amount of people that live in America. But yet, when you look on their map here, CNN, only 21 people died from CV-19 out of 58 million people. Even if this count was off by a thousand percent, it would still be a drop in the bucket. And I'm starting to wonder, why isn't anybody reporting on this? Any of you guys that follow Ben Swan's channel, this would be a great story for him to break down even further. I'm just glossing the surface. But if you guys, any of you go to his channel, have him, you know, maybe he'll look at these African countries, and the number of cases and the, and the number of countries that have not received a single sticker yet. Now... Let's look at the opposite of this. Let's look at the highest amount of stickered African countries and see how they're faring. Here is uh, Statista, and this shows the number of administered CV stickers per 100 people. All right. Now, the reason why this Sekeles, I think it's pronounced, this is an island nation, the reason why that is over 100 it's because that means there's more than one dose. So a lot of people have gotten two doses. So that's why that number is over 100. But if you look at the rest of these, not a huge uptake. You know, you got ranging anywhere from 5 to 15% of the population that got the sticker in, that got even both doses in any one of these countries. But let's take a look at Tunisia, for instance. Whoops. Okay. Looks like they got close to, it's in the top 10 of African countries that got the sticker under the COVAX program. And it appears as though about 11 people per 100 have gotten at least one sticker. Now, let's look back at our map here. Tunisia, where'd it go? Is it one of these island nations? Hold on. I had it here a second ago, you guys. Tunisia. Who knows their geography? Is it down here? Oh, brother. I think it's up here. Here it is. 67% of their peak. Okay. So, uh, I, a within the top 10 of the population being that have gotten a sticker it seems as though they were very aggressive here but yet they're still at 67 percent of their peak they're doing exactly the same as eritrea who hasn't had a single dose they're at 67 percent of their peak as well and look at the island nation of Mauritius. here it is right here they are at their peak. Now, this is an island, so a little bit different dynamic, but they are at their peak in the most cases and, and deaths since this whole thing started. And look at here. Here they are with 35 per 100 people uh, that got the sticker. They're way up there. Why are they still at their peak? 
Now, of course, there are other factors that the controllers will pull out and say you can't really compare that. Well, I'll say, oh, well, some of these countries were or were not social distancing. Some of these countries were or were not wearing masks. There's all these other factors. But when looking at Africa as a whole, when you see these numbers that we just covered, you can't tell the difference between countries that did or did not have access to stickers. It's random. It seems random. Now, what could explain this? Well, who knows? Uh, science will not concede that natural I moon the city could have anything to do with this. Here's a Sikilis. They're at 41% of their peak. Another island nation, 47, 41% of their peak. And here they are, the top stickered country in Africa with the most doses administered according to these statistics. And look at Uganda. Look at all these countries that are at their peak. Uganda, Congo, Zambia, Botswana, Namibia, and all with, with uh, deaths very, very, very small fractions of their total populations. But these counts may be underreported and we're told we can't trust them. So I wanted to lay all that out for you guys. Put links to all this if you want to use this information. But um, I think the deaths don't lie. Okay. They can say all they want about underreporting or under testing, but the deaths are due to it that you can't under report really unless someone's way out in the middle of nowhere and they don't know that they died but we know now that the grid is everywhere so if someone dies the body has to be taken care of right it's reported they run a test on it so this is what's going on in africa let's go into the chat here and see what you guys think about all this welcome everybody now i've got some stuff going on here i'll let that chat catch up i'll show you guys what we're working on this is from the series manifest and it opens with april 7th which is four seven backwards seven four backwards i'm sorry and it almost appears these almost look like fireworks do they not popping off through the ceiling so April 7th could be 7-4, or 4th of July. We're going to cover this. We're also going to um, break this down. I'll be watching a few more of the episodes here. And we'll get together a montage for you guys. And this will work on on Friday. I'll we'll have a little fun. But uh, Manifest, right? Crazy, 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 you guys. This came out in 2018. It was all about these people that went missing on a flight and came back five years later. So we'll pull that up tomorrow. What else do we have here? It's not surprising they don't trust CV. Yeah, you know, it's crazy. There was that one um, president of one country, we won't name him, in Africa. He ended up dying, and now they're allowing stickers into that country. They've got a new uh, puppet president, and now he's agreed to allow the stickers to come in. Very sad. Okay. Now, if there's more to this story about Africa that I that I missed or didn't cover, love to hear it in the chat right now. Okay. Tanzania, dude. Oh, that was the country. That president, yeah. Right? He was against everything, says Deborah. P. 
people will believe what they want to. Absolutely. Meridius has a high population of line workers. Let's see here. Cruise line workers. Mandatory sticks. Oh, that's probably why on Brandy. Thanks for that. You guys are smart. It's also that island nation. So yeah, people probably take cruises out there. All right. Well, yeah, they've been trying. CIA has been trying for decades to prop up puppet governments in Africa. Very sad history. Of course, there are British colonies there, too. Okay. Uh-oh, Green Money got in trouble. Thanks for modding, Tom. I appreciate it. Hey, Kevin. Hey, Betty. Tabitha. Jay. Tom. Brandy. So I really hope uh, Ben covers this because he's really good at breaking down all these numbers and stuff. And uh, this is this is right down his alley. And no one's really looked at these African nations in this way, looking at these numbers. So I'm glad. Now, of course, the news is saying that this whole thing's coming to a close. And the curve has been flattened. And the damage has already been done. You know, they've already... Um, you know, small businesses have closed forever. Uh, the big businesses have now been emboldened. The big companies, the online companies, the Uber companies, they've been emboldened and strengthened through all of this. And, of course, our rights have been eroded. Some things have been made mandatory. And so where do we go from here? Well, it's hard to say. It's like wide open right now. We're in uncharted territory on the heels of this. It feels a lot like what happened after Blind 11, where people were willing to give up a lot of their rights because they felt protected. And so here we are again, 19 years later. So it's kind of hard to tell what's going to happen, but I anticipate that there will be more cataloging, and profiling and all these different kinds of things. As a citizen of the United States, you will have to be cataloged and profiled and kept track of on a much more specific level. You'll have some kind of digital footprint, and I believe that's what's coming. And it's just going to keep escalating from here on out as each one of these situations comes and goes. This was a big one. This was a big one. I just saw an article about Bo Jivin forgiving college debt. And, you know, it's such clickbait. These people, they have no shame anymore because there is no comment section that you can go to and call them out on in some of these articles. So I clicked on it. There's people I know that have a lot of uh, college debt. It makes you sound like he's on our side. He's going to get it done. And it was just some dumb article about ITT Technical Institute, how they scammed a bunch of people. Many of you will remember the commercials of where they came out and they're like, hey, you can get your degree online and blah, 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 and we'll give you a degree. Come to find out, employers were actually avoiding people that went to school at ITT Tech because they knew the scam. So, so all those students that graduated from there sued. And according to this new law, if you can prove that the institution that you got your degree from it was it was lying or scamming, then you could get your debt forgiven. The question is, how in the heck were these student Stafford loans, these federal loans, given out under these bogus colleges? Uh, that right there tells you that government screws up all the time. They were actually financing people's education to bogus colleges to begin with. So, of course, they should pay back or they should forgive the debt on that. They should, it should have never happened to begin with. My second thought was, 
what about all the money the people did pay back over the years from the student loans? Shouldn't they get all that money back too? So the tens of thousands they've already paid to the student loans? And what about their time? They basically did time, basically. That's like a prison sentence. You know, getting a two-year degree. Shouldn't they be paid for all their time? Oh, but that will never happen. They'll just forgive the balance on the debt. You just got to start over. Sorry. This is why you can't trust the government. Because they don't have your best interest at heart. If they did, they would pay you back all the time you spent. Because the government made the mistake of, you know, here's what happens. When you go to a college or an institution of any type, any kind of training, and and, the, and you, you see that the government is attached or linked into that school, there is a sense of trust, or at least mainstream people think this way. They think, oh, this has to be a legitimate institution because who, why the government would be, wouldn't be providing loans to go to the school if it wasn't a legitimate institution. So they were given a false sense of security. You see how this works? This is why you don't trust any man. This is just one example. So. There you go. I think education is a scam. Anyway, the whole thing is a scam. I had, it took me five years to get my degree. And by within two or three years, it was obsolete. But yet, you still got to pay back all those school loans. Right? Back when I got my degree, I, I think I only borrowed a total of $15,000. And that's unheard of now. But I got a couple grants. And... um borrow like 15 grand and that I remember that taking me forever to pay off once I got out of college I think that took me five or six years to pay off so it's crazy it's crazy so what else do we have here let me go into the chat so those are just some of the headlines that I woke up to this morning Okay, I'm just reading in the chat here. All it all college does is give you a one up next to someone that doesn't have a degree. That's all it does. And even with that, that's not always foolproof. Cause then they'll tell you you're overqualified. Or they'll say, Oh, you haven't worked in your field. So or you haven't gotten any continuing education, or you didn't go further and get a master's, and you know, and then so it makes it impossible to get jobs. You see? So I think the whole thing is a scam. And what's that gonna do when they forgive all these loans? That makes people's college degrees worth nothing across the board. But, you know, they overcharge for college educations anyway. Way overrated, way overpriced, inflated. So they can keep all those uh, professors and school administrators working. That's what it's really all about. All right. Here's the way I envision trying to get ahead of this life. Find something you love doing. Leverage that whatever it is that you find upon your parents. So you don't have to run out of your parents' house right away. If they see that you're working, most parents want to help you. They're not going to go, oh, you owe me 500 bucks a month for that room. No, but you save your money. You don't just blow all your money. So, okay, let me give you a scenario. My son just turned 22. Yesterday was his birthday. So everybody say happy birthday, Max. And let's say, you know, he works, he works, he works at like a t-shirt shop. And I'm proud of him because, you know, he didn't run out and, you know, think he had to have another, you know, a child right away and get married and all that. He's taking his time. I think more of us should do that. Take your time because we're much better parents as we get older rather than when we're 19, 20, and 21 years old, right? But anyways, what I would like to see Max do is to 
save his money while he's staying with his mom, you know? And then guess what? You save up all that money. You could buy yourself some land. You could even put a cabin on it. For about $100,000, you could buy land and build something to put on it. Now, most people will agree that even at like a... Now, guess what? Now you can still work doing what you love, but you don't have rent or a mortgage hanging over your head. Now you can actually live your life. Now that minimum wage job or that $15 or $20 an hour job is a living wage because you don't have your living situation hanging over your head. And if I had the chance to do it all over again, that's what I would have done. If I could go back in time, what I would have done is I would have, because, you know, my mom was like, are you coming, you coming back after college? And I was like, I, my plan was originally to do that. And then I met Max's mom. And so... You know, that didn't happen. But, uh, man, had I gone back to college, I could have paid paid off my school loans in five years. I could have, you know, got a job that I had, used all that money to actually build a house while I was staying with my mom. And, she, of course, she wasn't going to charge me rent because, she, you know, because she sees that you're working towards something, right? No parent's going to charge you rent if they see you're working towards something. But if you're just working and throwing your money away, of course, they're going to say, well, you know, you're living here. You need to help out. That would be a parent's dream for you to stay with them so that they could help you build, build your castle, build your home, have some land, have something that no one can take away. And then when you're done in four or five years, you can, you have something that you can be proud of. You have something that you can actually, that cannot be taken away from you. Or be very hard to. I know we have to pay taxes on land and homes and all that. But that's why you don't go out and buy a $500,000 house. Because your taxes are going to be through the roof. You go to a state in America where you can buy five acres for ten grand or twenty grand. The prices have gone up. But this is over the last five to ten years, this is what you could have done. Okay. So, that's just one idea. Of how to get ahead. How to beat the system. But we don't think when we're young. You know we think that. Uh, we don't understand the value. You guys the single biggest expense. That most people pay is their rent or their mortgage. That takes the cake. It's twice. Two to three times more than, than a car payment. Than your car payment. Car payment's like number two. And then number three is like groceries. And then number four is like utilities. And then number five is like entertainment. That's pretty much the, the one, two, three, four, five of your largest expenses. So if you can knock out one of those giant expenses, which is your living situation, if you can knock that out early, you're ahead of the game, right? You're ahead of the game. I have a friend and he, his family, they didn't start out rich, but his dad worked for uh, one of those Fortune 500 companies. It was like a mathematician. And, you know, over the years, he just developed. And now he's worth like a lot, millions and millions of dollars. He passed away, left it to my friend who's sharing it with his brother. But my point is, is that when I think back when his dad was alive, he never drove new cars. He never had $500 a month uh, lease payments or car payments. He bought everything cash. He would save for it. And he would drive cars that were like five or six years old. That might be certified or might not be. This is how rich people get ahead. This is how people build wealth. But in our society, everybody wants to pretend they're rich before they are rich. They buy there are people making minimum wage jobs that are buying $200 pairs of shoes or spending all their money on a $600 a month or $500 a month car, right? That makes them look like they have more money than they do. So this is the problem. Now, I'm not here to tell you, to incentivize you to that your goal should be to get rich because the, the Bible's clear. That rich men, it's very, very hard for you to get to heaven. Camel passing through the eye of a needle. Very difficult. Because you can't take that with you. 
The Eye of the Needle was actually the name given to gates that went through the cities. At night, they would close the gates, but they would leave the Eye of the Needle open. And the camel, with all of its load on its back, could not get through the eye. This small tunnel that went underneath the gate to allow certain people to pass through had to leave it outside the city. It's no different today. If, you're, if your mind is on your money and your money is on your mind, it ain't on heaven. And that's the simple truth. But what I am telling you is you can, you can plan on a basic level to have your basic needs met without being without depending on other people, without being afraid that somebody's going to be taken care of, taken away from you, without being afraid that you're going to be homeless. There are basic needs. It's like almost I would compare it to like Noah preparing with the ark. There are simple things you can do that, that can give you a leg up in life if you just do a little bit of planning. And if there is any young people out there that are listening, please listen to what I'm saying. That this might be a plan for you. If you get along with your parents, say, hey, look, and sit down with them. Tell them what you want to do. Hey, I make uh, 25 grand a year. I want to try to save all that for four years. Within the first year, I want to use the first amount of money. I want to buy the land. It'll be sitting there. And then as time goes on every year, I want to keep start building on my land. And by the fourth year, I'll be out of your house. You see? See how simple that is? So, just some ideas. I don't know. Maybe I'm way off base. But, um... Okay. Now, the other thing is, hey, by the time you're 25, now you've got something that you can actually put a family in. Then you start your family because you've got somewhere for them to live. You're not giving rent to a landlord. You're not paying an expensive mortgage because you've paid it cash up front. There is no mortgage. So now all you got to really come up with is food and utilities. About a grand a month. Anybody can make that. You see the difference there? It's doing things in the proper steps. Now, my personal feeling is that money should not cost, our land should not cost money at all. But unfortunately, we live in a society where they sell land and it costs money. But there are many parts of the country where the land is very, very inexpensive. It's almost free. I mean, literally, they have places, places you might not want to live, of course, like Kansas. I think they give away like free land. They call it homesteading. But there are other places with very cheap land or used to be cheap anyway. Everything's gone up this year. This year was a game changer. Everything went up in price. Land, materials, building materials, everything went up in price. So, thanks for the, the birthday wishes for, for Max. So, learn a skill needed by others. Absolutely. That's great advice. Okay. We have the illusion of freedom. Voting was always rigged. Slavery never ended. Bill is right on, right over the target there. Chuck survives on a thousand bucks a month. Somewhere that goes to rent, less than 300 bucks for food a month. Yeah, so, you know, for Chuck, that would have been a great idea. You know, if he can knock out his $700 a month living rent, he'd be a lot better off, right? And it, as you get older, it's harder and harder to get Get over the hump. This is why when you're younger, that's the best time. People want to help you. You're like a student. You're a young person getting ahead, trying to get ahead in the world. Your parents are more likely to let you stay with them for a few years after you turn 18. You see? You got to leverage some of this stuff. So, auto mechanic is a great job. You know what they're doing in California is they're making it illegal for street mechanics do do work in their garages and yards. How sad is that? So some of these people with perfectly good skills, they can change out a radiator. They can, you know, change out a water pump. They are not allowed to work on their cars or other people's cars in their yard. And of course, this is, has to be coming from the mechanic lobby, right? Because they got all this overhead. They got to operate this huge garage. 
right? With the, all this equipment in it, tens of thousands of dollars worth of equipment. And then they're competing with the little guy down the road who's changing out radiators and water pumps. But that's not his fault. Hey, if you know how to do it, you should be able to make money on that. You shouldn't have to have like a license and all this stuff. And let your work speak for itself. You know, if you if you if you do it wrong or people complain, word's gonna get around and no one's gonna go, no one's gonna use that mechanic anymore. Right? I thought we lived in a free market society where a person's work and reputation speaks for themselves. But if a person's doing a great job changing out water pumps and radiators, they'll get all the business. They'll be successful. That I thought that was what was America was about. It's not about licensing and fear and oh, you can't do that because you don't have a license. We have to protect the consumers. Where was licensing in the eighteen hundreds? There wasn't. So, you know, I like to call these things out because it's critical thinking, you know, like sometimes you forget to realize how unfair things are sometimes and how they make absolutely no sense. And as, as long as we, as long as we keep forgetting and not calling this stuff out, it's going to continue to happen and it's going to happen more and more and more. The more we don't stand up and say, you know what? Licensing is ridiculous. Knock it off. Then they're just going to license more stuff. Pretty soon you're going to have to have a license to make, go put up a lemonade stand, which you do in certain cities. Lemonade stands are illegal. They can't stand that children can open a lemonade stand and raise some money for a fundraiser without it being taxed or licensed or tracked. Right? And so now you see the glass ceiling. Glass ceiling is it takes a lot of money to be successful. The only people that really get to make a lot of money in America are the people that already have money to start a business and do everything the quote unquote correct way. Get the licensing. Pay the taxes. You see how that works? And it's interesting now because these big businesses are trying to give the illusion that they're small businesses, right? They got franchise. That's what franchising is all about. You got these corporate entities. They give the illusion that it's being run by a small business, but it's still that business is under the umbrella of the larger company. There really are very few small businesses left. And if you're if you're on a shoestring budget or you're trying to start a small business, uh, according to America you're probably breaking the law because you don't have your license and you don't have this and you don't have that. And that's sad. It's very sad. But bless some of you. Some of you are very resourceful people and you know how to create, you know, use your skills to help create your own income. And that's amazing. And don't let ever let that get in the way. Just always remember, stay under the radar because there's people watching. We live in a tattletale society. And if you're getting over on somebody else, that's what they feel like, right? Oh, you're, they're getting over. They're getting an unfair advantage. I'm going to report them. This is what people do now. It's crazy. Everybody's got a cell phone and everybody wants to be a detective. And, you know, entertainment media supports and promotes that. They keep showing that over and over again, you know. Citizens, that's how they catch the criminals. A citizen reported it. So, I love you guys. Hang in there. I know life isn't easy. And I know that uh, we're all doing the best we can right now. I feel really bad for the people that have to go and make a, a very difficult decision when they go back to work. About getting a sticker or not. Just shakes me to the core. Um, I'm blessed I am not have not been put in that situation. But I know many of you have to go to an employer and go to work. And now some of your employers are putting you on the spot and are going to say, either you get the sticker or you don't come back to work. And that just blows me away that we are in a country called America where that's going to happen and is happening right now. It just makes me sad because here we are. This is how they were going to do it all along. Buying and selling. Either you work Either you get it or you don't work. 
And I think that probably half the people, no matter how dedicated you are to your belief system, your moral belief system, are going to have a very hard choice with that. I know some of you are going to go until the wheels fall off and are not going to do it. And bless you. But uh, others of you are going to have to or are just going to do it. I don't even know what to tell you. It started with the masks. And I told you, you guys, it's not going to stop here. They can force you to wear a mask and they can, they're going to force you to get a sticker. And here we are. Here we are. Had we stood up to that when it happened and said no. And had we got lawyers for that, you can't make people do that. Then maybe we'd be in a better position now. But here we are. Here we are. So I saw Elon Musk's name mentioned. Yeah, he's that guy. Now he's saying, oh, we may we may start using Bitcoin again. He's all over the place with that. And of course, Bitcoin got a, a small bump in their price because of that. But they're just playing a game right now. And I don't know what even to tell you guys about Bitcoin, about what the future is. My guess is that I don't I don't have a good feeling about it, to be honest with you. I feel like they're toying with people. I feel like all these alternative sites run on crypto. That's a big red flag to me. Not one has adopted the, um, YouTube's ad, uh, you know, platform. Not one. That tells me something. Tells me something. It's like they're caging the alternative platforms. You know, if you're ever on one of these alternative platforms and there you see a feed feedback button, hit the feedback button and say, hey, why is your platform based on crypto? Why don't you have ads like YouTube? Like what, what's going on here? Give them your feedback and let them know. Because until they do, we're all over a barrel right now. Every single person in the truth community is over the barrel right now. So it, it's basically the serpent is slowly constricting our rights and freedoms. Reminds me of the Jungle Book where the snake comes out and wraps himself around the boy. Slowly constricting him. First he hypnotizes him. And slowly constricts him. That's what's happening right now in America. Every month, every year that goes by, if you look back in time, you'll see we were much more free 20 years ago. And a lot of a lot of the re a lot of the reason for the constriction is digitization, internet, all of these things. It's enabling this new system of control, and they're doing it slowly. Because they don't want you to wake up to it. So they just pick things off around the edges that you don't notice right away. Or they'll target a certain group that you might not feel like you need to stick up for. You know, and so this is how it works. Slowly but surely. And, in, in, you know, for around 20 more years, none of us are going to recognize America. It's going to blend right into the other countries terms of your rights and freedoms. So, I've done enough uh, pontificating. I love each and every one of you. Thanks for showing up today. We'll get to see you guys tomorrow. Have a great day.